This is Neil Petwari, and I'm going to talk in this segment about introducing pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM. And we said that a digital modulation is formed by defining a basis of k orthogonal waveforms and having a list agreed upon at the transmitter and receiver of the m possible symbols and what each bit sequence for each symbol corresponds to. Pulse amplitude modulation is the easiest possible example of this. In PAM, we have one waveform in the basis. And this P of T is called our pulse shape. And we're going to get into why we're defining a new function name later as we get a little bit more complicated in our modulations. So because we only have one orthogonal waveform, all of our symbols, no matter what M is, are just scaled versions of P of T. That is some amplitude multiplied by P of T. And that's where pulse amplitude modulation gets its, na gets its name. So for binary, for binary bipolar PAM, we pick two opposite amplitudes uh, to use for our two symbols. So we have S0 of T, it becomes A times P of T, and S1 of T becomes negative A times P of T. And we might specify that this is used to send a bit zero, and S1 is used to, to send a bit one, but uh, it's arbitrary which bit we choose to send which symbol as long as we agree upon that at the transmitter and receiver. We might also say that S0, the vector, which was just here, it's going to be one value. It's going to be A, and S1 is going to be the value minus A. So we don't even really write the brackets uh, when we're writing this for PAM because we only have one value in that vector. Another option for M equals 2 is to have what's called on-off keying. And this is where S0 is equal to A, but S1 is equal to 0. That is that S1 of T is equal to 0 times the pulse shape, or just 0. When the transmitter is sending bit 1, in this case it wouldn't actually transmit anything. And that can be an advantage, but we'll also study this in terms of spectrum efficiency later. For M greater than 2, we're generally going to have an even value we're actually generally going to have a power of 2 as our value of m so that we have a fixed number of bits for each symbol. For m greater than 2, we're going to pick the amplitudes centered at 0, and they're going to be evenly separated. And we'll talk later about why this, but we'll say for now that if we're going to have evenly spaced symbols, then centering them at 0 minimizes the average squared energy. And remember, energy is something we want to conserve. While we're talking about this, we're going to say for, for m equals 0, instead of having multiple axes, we're going to have uh, one axis. And for m equal to 2, let's say we had minus a and plus a. And for m greater than 2, we're going to start to have minus 3a and plus 3a. And we're going to go all the way up to here to m minus 1 times a, and we're going to go all the way down here to minus m minus 1 times a. Okay, and I'll leave out whatever's in the middle here, but you can see that we skip 2a in between each pair of symbols, and in here right in the middle is 0, so it's centered at 0. And what this does is that it gives us a certain amount of average energy. That is, the average energy per symbol, assuming that each symbol is equally likely, we're basically saying, I'm going to have 1 divided by the total number of symbols, and we're going to add in each squared energy. And so for this one, it's going to be m minus 1 quantity squared times a squared. For the next symbol, we'd have m minus 3 quantity squared times a squared. We're going to have 9a squared plus a squared plus a squared plus 9a squared. And then 
you know, going on to the last one, which will be m minus 1 quantity squared a squared. Well, of course, this is going to require knowing what m is, but we can use an arithmetic series formula to show that this results in an average energy of m squared minus 1 divided by 2 times a squared. Okay, so this is the average symbol energy. What we're doing, just to make this more concrete, is we're sending one symbol at every time. And by every time, I mean all integer multiples of t sub s. Every delay of t sub s, we're going to send a new symbol. And we're going to pick a new symbol to send based on what next bits need to be sent. So our total transmitted signal would look something like this. We're going to have a sum over integer n, and I won't define the limits here, but basically at that time n, we're going to pick one amplitude, and that amplitude is going to multiply our pulse shape, but instead of just being p of t, it's going to be delayed by n times t sub s, where t sub s is our symbol period, and n is the symbol number in time that we're sending. Let's take an example, and I should say that this, this word bipolar is sometimes left out when we say binary PAM because it is the most common kind of uh, PAM modulation. We tend not to say the word bipolar when you see it in a book, for example. Okay, and we're going to take the pulse shape to be a rectangular. So phi zero of t is going to be one over the square root of t sub s between zero and t sub s and zero otherwise, so it's a rectangle. And it has unit energy, which is why it has this 1 over square root of t sub s in front. Um, I'm going to say that our two symbols, s0, are going to be a and minus a, as I said. But I'm going to pick a to be the square root of t sub s and s1 to be uh, minus the square root of t sub s. And that gets us so that the amplitude, when I multiply this amplitude a with p of t, I get an amplitude of 1 or minus 1 out of my symbol, and my plot looks better. There's no other reason I chose that square root of t sub s. And if I plot this in MATLAB, I would have it MATLAB randomly generate bits, and then it's going to plot this function. Here I have s of t. It starts out at minus 1, and then after t sub s period of time, it jumps up to plus 1, it stays there for several symbols, jumps down to minus 1, stays there for a couple of symbols, jumps back and forth, depending on what the current bit being sent is. And you can imagine if I receive this, I would be able to look at the plus 1 or minus 1, the values that I receive, and look for these rectangular shapes that are either positive 1 or minus 1. And that's what we'll talk about in the next video.